and welcome to podcast number five. We've made it for another week. I'm your host, Alex Lewis, sat in his car as usual. I'm overlooking the Isle of Wight. It is, it's not quite cracking flags. It's that kind of wispy, those wispy sort of white clouds, but it's a lovely day here. I've, um, I've got my suit on and I'm overlooking the Isle of Wight, actually. I've just driven down to the coast um, of South Sea. Uh, near Coffee Cup, if any of you know it. I've just driven past Kenny Jacket, the Portsmouth football manager. Um, there's loads of people milling about. It's really early on a Friday morning. It's quarter past eight on a Friday morning. And there's loads of joggers on the promenade. There's quite a few cyclists. They've shut down um, part of the road so you can't drive through it to stop people like yours truly um, nipping out to, to kind of drive out. Um, Okay, well, it's kind of topical, really, with joggers and whatnot, uh, because exercise is going to come into this quite a lot in this podcast. So I'm just going to talk to you briefly what the podcast is about, why it's important. Then we'll do some news and announcements, and then we'll crack on with the main topic of conversation. So, um, so yeah, what is this conversation about? Well, this conversation is about keeping a routine during lockdown. It kind of sprung up for me a little bit about a day in the life during lockdown video that I made, and... I thought it was really important to actually dive deeper in to a structured day for me and just to talk you through step by step what I do to stay sane during lockdown. So it's going to be for those people that are struggling right now. So, for example, my mum, God bless her. She is she's still alive, but God bless her. She's <laughs> she <laughs> should I just get on with it. Yeah, OK, right. She's um, she's struggling right now because she's really lacking her routine. Um, she's going to bed late. She says that she's drinking a bit more. She's not doing much exercise. She's putting on weight and it's just feeding into this kind of negative feedback loop. So, mum, if you're listening, this one's for you. Um, so it's it's going to be important um, for people just to kind of draw from my experiences. Um, you're probably thinking already, well, why are you qualified to talk about this? I actually for once feel really I actually feel overqualified to talk about this subject. I've been self-employed for uh, seven, eight years since I was 22. And I used to be the king of doing absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing. So I really do understand the importance of routine and structure. Um, I understand there's going to be like ups and downs. Um, I can see, sorry, a very, <laughs> shall I be saying that? Yeah, I'll be saying this. A very, very attractive woman has just jogged past. Jesus. I have got a girlfriend, but it's all right to look. Anyway. Um, wow. Sorry. Um, it, you know, if you're if you're a girl looking at this, you'd probably be thinking, you know, if you're a girl and there's a hot guy, it's all right, isn't it? It's a hot guy. Wow, that was a bit of a hot flush. Jesus, right? Come on, focus. <laughs> so um, back to back to being self-employed. Yeah, I've experienced lots of emotions, and so I feel well versed to talk to you about the importance of routine and structure because it certainly helped me in the last well six months to a year, um, especially obviously during my gambling addiction days and depression and stress and anxiety and things like that so I, I can sympathize I can empathize with you guys if you're going through a hard time right now and struggling to, to cope basically during lockdown so today is all about helping you yes I'll talk about my experiences but it's about giving you tips and advice hopefully if you just take one or two things away from today's conversation and go oh do you know what I might implement that it's really to look after your physical and your mental health that's the main thing um so let's just briefly talk about some news and announcements um there's not too many this week I usually overload it but um just a couple of news and announcements um firstly I just want to say um thank you for your support it's been brilliant um, a lot of you have got in touch with your questions about my upcoming gambling uh, podcast series. That uh, Questions are now closed or entries are now closed, if you like. Um, I've already been start, I've started to record some interviews, actually, with some really interesting people, um, some friends and uh, some acquaintances that I think are going to really help you understand a bit more about addiction, about the mental health side, about how it affects um, family members. Um, and there's, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff that in there. Uh, so it's essentially going to be, I think, an interview based podcast series. Um, obviously I'll drop in my own ideas as well, but I'm really excited for that one. I think that's going to come out probably next month, I think at this stage. Um, and 
that is kind of it. That is the only news announcement. Oh, one other thing, I suppose. Uh, myself and my friend who've been writing this um, sort of uh, this radio show, kind of a kind of a, a tongue in cheek mock radio show. Uh, we've now got a name, and we've. Um, I say we, but basically, basically he's he's written most of it. I've just chipped in with a few ideas, and um, I, I think I can offer obviously talking about how to kind of edit things and stuff. So that's the that's what I'm bringing to the table. But um, but no, really excited about that one. And and of course, I suppose on Sunday, old Bojo. I was going to call him old Blowjob. That's what I like to call him. Um, he is hopefully going to announce how lockdown is going to be eased. So um, hopefully, we can all kind of listen to this podcast about keeping a routine and think well I don't have to do this for too long because in a couple of weeks I'm going back to work. Anyway let's get on with the main topic of conversation. Right so I'm going to structure this I'm going to just talk you through my daily routine Um, I'm going to give you times and examples there'll be sort of stories and anecdotes as usual and um I'll just hopefully talk you through some like benefits of why I do it during uh, during this during the day, um, and then I've got some, some some like general points at the end that I'll wrap up with. So um, so here we go. Right, the importance of routine. Um, okay, so I I tend to get up at seven twenty five. I get up at the same time every single day, and that includes weekends. Um, so a consistent wake up time is good for you because. It means your body clock is um, is is the same every day. You, you you know your body gets into this natural rhythm and it knows what to expect. Um, one thing I've learned from kind of having no routine and getting up really late in the in the old days, um, getting up early means you can make the most of your day. Now a lot of this a lot of this advice I'm going to be giving is common sense, but you know what's what's the phrase? The early bird catches the worm. I totally get it. You know, I also understand if you've used to be, you know, used to getting up late, the first couple of days where you're going to get up early is going to be really tough. It's going to be really horrible. You're going to feel horrendous. Um, but the best thing you can do is just get out of bed. One thing I would avoid is press uh, pressing snooze and just dozing. Um, it's like the worst thing you can do for you. I was watching a YouTube video the other day, actually, about a guy talking about sleep and whatever. And he's like, the best thing you can do is just get up. Just get get up straight away. So try and avoid pressing snooze, having another 15 minutes. You're not really sleeping, are you? Let's face it. You know, you know, turning the alarm off, getting up an hour later. Already, you're starting to feel rubbish about yourself. Well, I certainly, that's what certainly happens to me anyway. So, yeah, get up early, basically. Um, then what I do at half past seven, so five minutes later, I just basically head straight downstairs and I do like little tasks that basically take my mind away from like thinking, oh my God, I'm so tired and just already getting into a negative mindset. So I I call it the yes ladder. Now, any of you that work in sales, um, or telemarketing or whatever, will know about the yes ladder. It's basically getting people to say a series of yeses, like small little yeses, jumping through little hoops to get to a big hoop. And the little hoop for me, or the little hoops are just little things like put the kettle on, you know, um, load the dishwasher, feed the cats, let the cats out. Just little easy tasks that get me into this like routine. Um, As I say, just take me away from thinking, God, this is early. I feel horrendous. I don't like this at all. I wish I was just back in bed. So I do that for about five minutes and already I'm just like, well, I do this every day. So it's just like developing a little similar pattern. Um, So that helps me get over that initial burden of, um, of, of tiredness. Then what I'll do is I'll have breakfast and I have breakfast. I eat the same breakfast every single day. And the breakfast that I eat, in case you're wondering, is uh, it's porridge with banana, raisins and brown sugar. Maybe sometimes a little bit of yoghurt. It won't be a big bowl, it'll be a small bowl. And um, for me, again, it gives me loads of energy. I think porridge has been seen to kind of give you long lasting energy, which is which is good. Uh, lots of sugar in there as well to kind of wake myself up. And um, yeah, I hope that you're eating the same breakfast every day, basically. Um, if you can, obviously try and avoid like high sugary cereals. I mean, I know I've just said I've got a lot of sugar in my uh, my breakfast, but, um, you know, like your Kellogg's, 
uh, sort of breakfasts and stuff. Try and have a, a good a good bowl of um, you know bowl of oats. Uh, get some fruit and nuts in there. Um, that kind of thing, basically. Uh, you might have I don't know. You might have a slice of toast. Uh, you might even have some eggs on toast. I don't know. That'll come a bit later. I talk about that a bit later. Um, but the importance of having a, a good breakfast. People that skip breakfast, I'm sorry, you're making a massive mistake, a huge mistake. Breakfast is the most important meal in the day. Um, it gets you gets you up, gets you going, gets you energised. With that, I will hydrate, and I'll hydrate um, quite a lot, actually. I'll have at least a pint of water. I'll have a pint of uh, like room temperature water, not ice cold water, because that's quite hard to sort of get down your, down, down your body. So a, a pint of um, lukewarm water. Then I'll have uh, an orange juice as well with the bits in because, you know, it's good. It's got lots of vitamin, vitamin C in there. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll pour myself a green tea and I'll pour Eleanor a cup of just normal tea. So basically already in this section, breakfast is and the wake up time is a big part of the day, a huge, important part of the day. Right. Moving on. Um, then what I'll do at 10 to 8. After, after all that's done, I'll, I'll um, head back upstairs with the cups of teas and um, I'll, I'll jump back into bed. And just for about five or ten minutes, um, I will then, like I've got now, I've got my little notebook, I'll just write a little to-do list. So I suggest that you do the same, you know, write a little to-do list. What have I got to do today? Now, it might be little jobs like... Um, it might be I'm going to do some exercise today or it might be a little job like I need to pay in a cheque or or whatever. Um, there might be bigger things on the to-do list like I need to edit a video or I need to call such and such. Um, things like that really. Um, then what I'll do is I'll plan a timetable. So I use a timetable and this actually I think will help you the most I think is, is using, I use my work sh- uh, schedule or basically I, I work as a teaching assistant, so I match the school day with um, my time during um, during lockdown. And sorry, there's just so many people. I've, I, I've, I'd never would have thought coming down at this early in the morning there'd be so many people. There's just loads of people exercising. It's quite nice to see, actually. Anyway, um, so yeah, I, I plan a timetable and I use the school day. So for example, you'll see in a minute when we go through it throughout the day, like I'll have set times, it's structured, it's like an hour long, then the alarm goes and then I do something else. And I think it's really important for you to do something like that. Um, if you could maybe match the same as your work schedule. So I don't know if you're if you work in an office um, so you can sort of mimic that. Um, I know it's a bit of a kind of running joke, but I actually, as I say, I put on a uniform to make it feel like I'm doing something different. Um, and actually just that little bit, uh, that tip for me really works. It sets my mind of like, right, okay, no, this is work. This is like, I'm getting up. Um, I'm doing something different because working from home can be very, um, isolated. It can be quite lonely and it can also be very hard to like distinguish like what's work and what's like chill out time. So you need to kind of section out the day. That's what I find anyway. As a fat man on a bike. Fat man on a bike. That should be illegal. Well, it shouldn't be illegal, but he's just really struggling there. But fair enough, he's doing exercise. God, I'm horrible, aren't I? Actually, one of the things that's cropped up, just like coming out of this conversation a little bit, is on the homepage of the YouTube, like recommended videos, it's like coming up quite a lot with like, are you a narcissist? Or like ways to deal with a narcissist. And I think it's subliminal messaging to me to say, mate, you're a nar- you know, you're a narcissistic person you need to stop, like, you need to rein it in. And I just want to go a record, and I think I'm going to address this in another podcast soon, or a video. I am a narcissist, but, like, not a massive uh, narcissist, (laughs) arsonist, like, a little bit of a narcissist. I feel like you have to be, if you're going to put yourself on YouTube, you're going to have an ego, you're going to be wanting to kind of fulfil a bit of an ego thing. And I totally get that, but, you know, haters are going to hate. Anyway, there we go, I've addressed it. Um, Right, (laughs) Moving swiftly on. So we're only at eight o'clock in the morning. My God, I'm going to have to kind of whiz through this. I'm going to have to whiz through this. Um, So eight o'clock, pretty much eight o'clock, bang on eight o'clock every single day, I'll have a shower and I'll have a cold shower. 
Um, you would have seen that in the day in the life uh, during lockdown video. I have a cold shower. Um, quite a few people already have got in touch. Uh, Tell, you know about this. You said you've been doing it. Elson, you've been having a cold shower as well. Um, it's something that I've done for the last year or two. And my word, it's really good. It's really good for you. I, can, I, I should have done my proper research. I think it's called the Wim Hof Method. I was going to say the Wim Hom, like the... Uh, <laughs> the old Chinese cook, whatever his name is. Um, but uh, but the, the method, basically, uh, the benefits of, of, like, for example, like going in the sea, like a cold sea, you know, deep sea diving, um, or like a cold shower, a cold bath, it's really good for your immune system. Um, I'm genuinely a big believer in, like, basically, I don't, I think I've been good to not attract, like, coronavirus, because I, I genuinely feel like my immune system is really strong. Um, it wakes you up, of course, like a cold shower, it's going to feel horrendous. The first few couple of weeks, it was just awful. Like, it is horrible. Like, you're thinking, why am I doing this? Like, why am I inflicting so much pain on my body? But you face your fears. So the anxiety of like, oh my God, pardon me, I don't want to do this, is um, it's incredible because you face that fear and you just jump straight in. It's like jumping, jumping in... Um, to a fire you don't want to do it but you do it obviously you don't jump into a fire because you're going to kill yourself uh, or injure yourself but you know a cold shower is really good for you because it's quick as well and you're going to feel amazing afterwards honestly I'm like buzzing off the endorphins like it's incredible and also you don't feel lethargic like a, like a warm shower I feel really like oh I feel really relaxed so I actually do that later on in the day um anyway Good little hygiene, uh, beauty regime. So, like to clean my teeth. You know, it goes without saying, really. Um, you know, put your deodorant on, put your hair gel in. If you're a girl, obviously do your makeup or, or you know, uh, or brush your hair, whatever you need to do, basically, just to make yourself feel good. Make yourself feel good. So I'll put on some nice perfume. Um, uh, I can't remember which one I use. I use, um, oh my god, what's it called? I don't use Million. Like everyone uses Million, don't they? you know, that gold million, uh, that, that, that spray. What spray do I use? Zadig? Zadig, I think, that's it. Voltaire or something. Uh, like a manly smell. I feel like a man. I feel like a man. Man, I feel like a man. Um, okay, right, moving on. Bloody hell, I need to kind of whiz through this. Right, I keep saying this. 8.15. Um, basically then, I'll check my emails, check my phone. Um, and I want to just go on record and say, I think you should limit your phone use, your mobile phone use. I think, again, it's an addiction that we all kind of know, yeah, should probably rein that in. Yeah, should probably not be on my phone. But genuinely, that will actually really harm you during lockdown, just being on your phone. Like, you can refresh social media all you want. Nothing really major is going to happen. Someone might upload a photo or video, or someone might put something new on their story. Like, that's great, but you're going to get bored. You're going to get really, really bored. Um, I used to be really good at just having like a little loop of like websites I would visit. So it might be like the BBC Sport website. Then it'd be like the foot, uh, the football um, AFC Bournemouth website. Then I'll check like a refereeing website. Then I'll check my emails. And I would just run through that loop. Like once I completed that loop, I'd be like, right, I'll go back to the start and just do the loop again. And um, it just drives you nuts. It drives you absolutely nuts. Um, equally, spending your day on YouTube, all day on YouTube, every day is um, probably going to entertain you somewhat and fill, fill some time. Um, but it's not going to be that great. Obviously, you know, you should be watching my videos. Obviously, you should be watching every single video for every single minute. Uh, all right, you know, but um, yeah, no, limit your phone use. So I, I, t I kind of check my phone first thing in the morning at 8.15 for about 20 minutes, half an hour, answer WhatsApp, Instagram, you know, make uh, reply to comments and things like that, basically. But then it's time to focus. So at 8.45, I'm sat at my desk in my uniform and I'm opening up my laptop and it's period one, right? The first activity. So um, my alarm, like I've alluded to, my alarm goes off like every hour. Then I have a break, a couple more hours, then I have lunch and then like another hour. Um, so it matches the school day. Um, I just want to sort of go on record and say it's like it's important for you guys to have a project. Uh, it's important for everyone to have a project. Now, a project can take many forms. It can take something like um, it can take. A small little project it might be like right today I'm going to put up the shelf in the spare room um, 
or it might be a bigger project like for example the next door neighbor ne- ne- next door neighbor is like has ripped up his back garden and he's put in a patio um and he's now he's now laying grass he's done it all himself fair enough i think my girlfriend like fancies him a little bit because she he's showing like like practical skills and i don't i can't i'm like rubbish at diy and i feel a little bit like emasculated or whatever the word is i'm like yeah but i can cook and it turns out he can cook as well it's just like a little bit of competitiveness but anyway um but yeah uh not that i'm jealous at all but um yeah basically a project can be anything it could be creative as well so like um i know some of you are probably sitting here already and going yeah but i don't know what to do what project could i actually do um these are just suggestions but you might say like right i'm going to learn a new, a new language i know hugh um a guy i know from the gym he's learning i think spanish and portuguese fair play to him um you know other projects as well you might do some creative writing i know someone uh, is writing a book fair enough they're writing a book um it might be studying so you might think right i want to pass some exams um or uh, i suppose if you're really young you're listening to this uh, you might be studying for your uh, your gcse's or your a levels or i actually spoke to a, a drum um student's parent and she was saying yep she's like doing open university so there's courses available you know this is a really good time i think to kind of knuckle down and do something creative basically obviously i'm filling my time and void by doing youtube and it's it's given me something to focus on i do it every day um it's very varied i really enjoy it and um i'm learning some new skills every day like learning how to video uh, edit learning how to uh you know sharpen my public speaking skills i'm still working on it guys you know um yeah you know publishing videos looking at the algorithm it's just there's a whole bunch of stuff so you know, in fact, a, a couple of other people have got in touch and said, oh, what about this? I want to start a YouTube channel for this or I want to do some videos about um, this or this, that and the other. You know, I, 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 I mean, I can give my advice. I mean, I'm no expert. That's the that's the crazy thing. I still consider myself an amateur. Um, I'm just trying to make videos that hopefully are going to entertain you and whatever. But um, you don't need much. You just need a video camera. And you've all got those mostly because you've got a phone. That's really easy. Um, you can get free editing software online. I use Filmora. Uh, I pay like 60 quid for like a lifetime fee. It's not amazing. There are other like video editors out there. But if you have a Mac, you can use, use iMovie. It's for free, you know. Um, don't worry about your first set of videos. Like they're going to be a little bit basic. But basically you learn as you go. So you'll get better. The more you do it, the better you get. Um, and we all... We all put stuff out there, you know, I put stuff out there thinking this is my best ever video and it's, in reality, I look back and I think, oh, actually, like, oh, I could have done something different here or whatever. But you just learn as you get better. So it's that, it's a bit cheesy, but you've got to enjoy the process, right? You've got to, you know, it's it, it's the journey, not the destination. So hopefully all of these tips are just taking you through um, basically saying how I enjoy the journey, how I get pleasure from structure and routine. Um, I draw happiness from, like... Um, doing the same thing being quite regimented um and yeah things like that anyway conscious of time i keep saying that and we're only at 8 45 my god right i'm gonna whiz through this uh, a little bit um so 9 45 period two the alarm goes i'm doing my activity it could be sort of video editing or whatever i drink lots of water throughout um 10 45 for half an hour is a break and that's uh, a chance for me to have a coffee We've got a nice fancy coffee machine at Christmas uh, was bought for us. So I like to have a nice coffee, um, sit outside, have a, have a piece of fruit like an apple and a banana. And again, just check my phone, basically, or, uh, or just soak up the, the, the sweet sound of birdsong as well. Um, then the next couple of hours, um, I'm again, period three, period four. I'm by this point, I'm getting quite square. My eyes are kind of getting square. I'm, I'm then thinking, uh, I'm getting a bit fed up of doing this. I've been you know, editing the same video or I've been sat looking at the computer screen now for, for quite a few hours. So, um, so yeah, at that point, recently what I've been doing is speaking to friends. Um, so like using Zoom, using FaceTime, WhatsApp, uh, video, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's obviously good. Stay, sh- stay social. Uh, it's important to use that social muscle, um, that social lubricant. Um, and then I'll do some exercise. And I think this is a whole other activity of a, or a whole other podcast. But I do some stretching and then I like to go for a run. And running has been amazing. 
All you need is a pair of trainers and the outdoors. You don't need any equipment. It's amazing. Um, you can do short runs, long runs, like cardio runs. Um, you can do sprints. You can go up hills. You can go down hills. Um, it's just amazing. So, um, as I say, there's so many people running around here uh, down in South Sea on the promenade. It's, it's incredible. Um, so I'll, I'll tend to sort of work out just before lunch, get home, have my, uh, so at one o'clock, have my uh, post-workout meal. So it'd be like eggs on toast, um, scrambled eggs with a bit of chilli and garlic. It's very good for you. Chilli's got five times more vitamin C than an orange. Uh, then I will chill out. I'll like relax in the garden. I might um, sort of, uh, I might actually have a little doze in front of the TV. I've been watching Michael Jordan's um, um, sort of documentary series about the Chicago Bulls recently and that's that's quite a nice programme to just doze off to. It is a good programme, but I just find that I kind of fall asleep watching it. Sorry, Michael. Um, then uh, then sort of three o'clock till six o'clock, I teach drum lessons remotely. So a um, little bit of an upsell, but if any of you fancy a drum lesson, yeah, yours truly gives them. Uh, you Skype or FaceTime or whatever. Um, so then six o'clock will swing in and then it's dinner time. And really important for you guys to eat healthily. Um, it will obviously aid your physical health. Um, so yeah, you know, it goes without saying, get your fruit and veg in there. Um, yeah, get your meat in there. I don't know if you're, if you're uh, vegan or not, but um, you know, I'm, I'm non-vegan. Um, so I will have, usually have a bit of meat, might have like brown pasta or um, I usually like to have rice. Uh, me and Eleanor like to cook aubergines, uh, like broccoli, that kind of thing, like Chinese dishes, burgers, chips, um, that kind of thing, basically. So it's a good opportunity right now to get into cooking as well. Um, and, you know, use your recipes, look on YouTube. Again, <clears throat> you could look at the recipes that I've given you. <laughs> but no, there's a ton of ton of different styles and, um, you know, from, from around the world. You can cook Jamaican curries, you can cook... Um, Indian curries you can talk you know you can cook American comfort food just a real good chance to get into uh, to get into cooking and I highly recommend doing it it's great for your mental health it relaxes well it certainly relaxes me and uh, the result is your shirt for me your I'm showing Ellen and my love by cooking a really good meal do you know what I mean I get really good pleasure out of cooking someone a nice meal so I think it's got quite a, quite a few benefits um anyway I think I'm gonna have to start wrapping things up which is a real big shame because I've got I've got so many pages of notes. Um, seven o'clock. I'm then like we're relaxing with Eleanor. Like we we might go for like an evening stroll, enjoy the sunset, look at the Isle of Wight. I recommend you do the same. You know, take a nice walk throughout the day. Um, bit of fresh air. Time to reflect as well. Bit of gratitude. Um, that sort of thing. Um, or I might go on my own. Or, or you know, perhaps Eleanor doesn't fancy coming out with me, and I'll go on my own. I'll just listen to a podcast. Um, have a little walk around, listen to some music, uh, just sort of start relaxing basically. Um, then at eight o'clock for a couple of hours, me and Elle will just kind of pass out in, you know, in front of the TV. Uh, we've been watching The Money Heist on Netflix, um, this Spanish um, fictional uh, programme. It's a bit like Prison Break basically. Um, so we'll just kind of watch TV and watch maybe an episode, maybe watch Afterlife as well with Ricky Gervais. I think that's hilarious. I think that's really good. Uh, and then 10 o'clock is bedtime. So, you know, brush, brush teeth, wash face, um, and then basically jump into bed. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm like one of those that kind of, you know, goes out like a light bulb. Um, so another tip and advice would be do not go to bed late. That is the killer. That is the absolute killer. Um, and it just does not feed you very well. Um, also avoid alcohol as well. I'll, I'll like Friday night, I'll have a lot of, you know, drink quite a few beers. It's Friday night or whatever. But like Saturday, I'm feeling horrendous. Um, so yeah, just avoid alcohol, basically. It's not going to help your sleep at all. Um, right, in conclusion, oh my God, in conclusion, I'm going to have to whiz through this. Um, obviously, this has been relatable to me. What, might, what works for me might not work for you. Um, the most important thing, I think, if anything, is sleep. I can't tell you how important sleep is. Seven to nine hours. Um, I actually, if I get anything less than eight hours, I'm like in a foul, grumpy mood. I just don't work. I get frustrated. I get tired. I get agitated. I get stressed. Uh, and then it just feeds into this negative feedback loop. Um, like I've already said, have a similar like bedtime. Um, wake up straight away um, and prevent late nights. 
uh, eat at the same times just to, for the body clock to kind of get in the same rhythm. Exercise, ex- exercise helps your sleep. Um, it also makes you feel better. I think I'm going to do a podcast next week or, or the week after. I can't. I don't know when exactly, but uh, talking a bit more about exercise. I might have a special guest as well. Who knows? Um, and avoid being on the phone. It's important to socialise. Um, have something to look forward to. So like at the moment on Friday nights, we do a pub quiz with our friends, uh, Charlie and Alice, and uh, there's quite a few of us. So that's quite a good thing to kind of look forward to. Um, and the main thing is have structure to your day. You know, eat good food, have have an ongoing project as well. So something to focus on. Um, if you're working from home, you've obviously got that to focus on. If you've been furloughed, perhaps you work in the building trade um, and you don't have much to do. Can you focus your energy on something different? Um, like I said, you know, could you study? Could you write a book? Could you uh, get into exercise? Could you make um, things around the house? I think one guy, uh, Johnny, I think I've seen on Facebook, he's a carpenter, but he's been making like workout equipment at home, or he's been he's made like um, he's made some uh, some stuff for his little and you know, like a swing. That's it's incredible. Um, so yes. I mean, there's so, so many more things I could say, but, you know, you're just looking really to stimulate the brain. Um, Productivity feeds productivity. Other mantras I've got is like one day at a time. Enjoy the journey, not the destination. Uh, And I want to leave you with um, John Lennon. I'm going to paraphrase from him, but I think he said, life is best um, when busy making other plans. Like, I don't know about you, but when I'm with a friend, I like to kind of make plans and, and you kind of just future project. Um, so it's all about like, you know, making today as best as it can be. So it means tomorrow is a, an even better day, if that makes sense. I'm getting a bit woo woo, (laughs) but anyway, life is kind of a flat line and you just draw happiness, um, from little things like good food, good exercise, um, good sleep, uh, good sex, you know, lots of, lots of, lots of different things. Um, and, uh, yeah, it keeps me kind of solid. Uh, and I just get, I guess, to get joy from, from keeping a routine basically. So, um, I think, I think that is all I want to say. Um, as I say, I could go on. Uh, you've been listening to podcast number five. Thank you for listening. Hopefully that's been, um, valuable for you. Hopefully you've taken away a couple of things and you think, okay, I can keep a routine. Uh, like I said at the beginning, it'd be, it'd be typical that I'll, uh, Bojo will announce on Sunday, we're out of lockdown and this will be all irrelevant. But hopefully this has been valuable to you that are self-employed as well. Um, and hopefully just giving you a few ideas uh, because I guess no one really kind of gives you, um, no one really gives you a booklet as an adult to say, right, this is how to be an adult. This is how to actually do things day to day. So I hope, I hope for you, this has been valuable. Anyway, thank you ever so much. I will speak to you soon and look out for new videos every Wednesday. I'm putting new videos out on every Wednesday. Anyway, um, take care, guys. Speak soon. And I will speak to you in podcast number six. Okay, cheers. Bye.